Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Well, all, think, all things considered, Jared, I'm doing all right. How are you doing? You know, um, it's fine. If If I can summarize this podcast that we're about to have today, it's fine. I know a lot of people feel a lot of ways. We're going to get right into this. A lot of people feel a lot of ways about the Cotton Bowl and, and how things happened. Um, you you can say that if you want to, Zach. I, the, the, the gift part, the calling for Ryan Day's job part is stupid, but I think you know that. And by the way, in, in case anyone out there is like, what? No, you should fire. Sh- shut up. Shut up. I mean, the que- the, the question is going to be like, okay, sure, you want to fire him. Who are you going to replace I him I met with? Justin Fry. No, you literally said the words fire Ryan Day. What are you talking about? Like, who are you going to, who are you going to replace him with? Like, I, I, that's, just, just stop. Just stop. Honestly, that's not even... Listen. W- w- Urban Meyer's done, my guy. He yeah. would not survive in modern college football, which I know is a weird thing to say. But Urban Meyer's entire system of everything was based around controlling the players, and he, you no longer can control college football players. Um, yeah, that that's that's not how college football with NIL with the transfer portal works anymore. Um, Urban Meyer got out when the getting out was good for you know him and his style. He's done. Um, All right, well, let's let's talk about the in the light. Let's talk about the. I'm just, I'm just going to say, in the light of what we saw, uh, at, you know, Michigan beat Alabama in the Rose Bowl. In light of what we saw, and yes, Michigan's a bunch of cheaters. Yes, they're a bunch of cheaters, and they cheated, and they cheated for two and a half years. But don't let that distract you from the fact that they are actually pretty good. And if you're a Michigan fan, if you're watching this, if you see J.J. McCarthy in the thumbnail and you want to see what a pair of Ohio State podcasters have to say about Michigan finally winning a playoff game and going to the national championship, what do we have to say about that? Here's my message. Here's my message to you, Michigan fan. One, congratulations. Two. You did a thing. (laughs) Yes. You did a thing. I actually feel bad for you. I actually feel bad for you, Michigan fans. The NCAA, if if you if you if you end up beating Washington, even if you don't, even if you just want to ride high off of the Alabama victory, I feel really bad for you because it's going to get vacated. And what sucks about that is that this team, your team, the Michigan Wolverine team, appears based off of their games against Ohio state and Alabama, which is post cheating, unless y'all found a new way to cheat since firing Connor stallions. And you know, in which case good on you, I suppose you, you didn't need to cheat your shit's going to get vacated, but you were actually good enough all along that you didn't need to be cheating. It'll get vacated for nothing because as it turns out, you were good enough that you didn't need to cheat. And yet you were your shit's going to get vacated for nothing. For nothing. Cause you were good enough not to need to be doing it. That being said, you still deserve to have it vacated. That's not me saying it shouldn't be vacated because you cheated. You cheated and you got caught. You didn't even need to. I feel bad for you. Honestly. I don't. I don't uh, feel bad. Oh, yeah, it's right. They're Michigan fans. Fuck them. My bad. I forgot. Oh, boy. I got lost in the sauce there for a second. Sorry, Kyle. Whew. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. I got lost so. in the sauce there for a second. Yeah, no, no. They're Michigan fans. Fuck them. I don't feel bad for you. You know, the, the, the one the one highlight here is that you got two Big Ten teams and a national title. Yeah, but fuck one of them. 
Yep. Agreed. So here, here's right. the other thing. Here's the other thing I want to say. I'm going to go ahead and say now that we're actually getting into the cotton bowl, which I know Kyle is like trying to poke me into doing. I'm going to say this right off the top. I don't care. Because I have the angry Michigan fan who I'm pretending is watching this podcast is already going to the comment sections to tell me how terrible we looked against Missouri and the co- I don't care. And if you think that's sour well, grapes, if you think that's copium, go listen to the preview episode. We did a preview episode, Ohio State versus Missouri in the Cotton Bowl. I spent the entire episode talking about how little I cared about the game and how it doesn't matter. So if you think I'm just saying, well, the game didn't matter because Ohio State didn't really care. And da, 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 da. I said it before the game started. So you can't you, you can't you can't sour grape me on this one. Yeah, here's here here's my just my take on on the Cotton Bowl. Defense looked great. I thought overall the defense looked sure. great. O- obviously, the offense could not find the rhythm, and we've or been a saying quarterback all year. or an offensive lineman. Well, well I was getting there. <laughs> offense offense couldn't offense couldn't find a rhythm at all. And it, and it starts it starts up front there. We Jerry and I have been saying it all year, and towards the end of the season, it finally finally nipped them in the butt here. Back to back games where the offensive line just looked like crap. I don't care. I don't care what kind of quarterback you have. There. I don't care if you have Braxton Miller or J T. Barrett or any any quarterback back there. I don't well, care who. He- you're 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 not going to have success with the offensive line play that we've seen these past two games. Everything you said is true. Period. Everything you said is true. The offensive line's terrible. Um, Ohio State has apparently totally whiffed so far in the, I I mean, not, they've apparently totally whiffed in the transfer portal as far as bringing in an offensive tackle. Um, That's highly, highly concerning. Um, And there's obviously like the portal's not over yet and there'll be another portal post spring and, and all of that. Like I, I I get all of that. Um, what was the point of the O line shuffle? Um, they they put in a different center. I I only know rumors as to why that's true. I don't know factually why that's true, so I'm not going to say anything more than that. When it comes to the the like, the one thing I'll disagree with what you said, Kyle, is if Kyle McCord's the quarterback for that game, they win it. And that's not that's not me apologizing for Kyle McCord. It's not. I Ohio State will move on just fine without Kyle McCord next season. But if they had Kyle McCord for that game, they win it. And Devin Brown got hurt. Again, they had to put all you only get 15 practices between, you know, the the Michigan game and the bowl game and you had to use all those practices to get Devin Brown ready to lead the team. And not enough of those reps in hindsight, in hindsight, not enough of those reps went to Keenholz. Um I I I would I wonder where Jebby was. All your eggs in one basket there. You put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, you did. I wonder where Jebby was. And, and if Keenholz isn't ready, why why is why is Jebby on the team? Was he on the sideline? Was he good to go? Did you only like I, I get wanting to protect the young guy and Ohio State essentially had to pay play that entire game with their third string quarterback. And yes, for God's sakes, I know Ohio State once played in the Cotton Bowl with the third string quarterback before and it went for. Cardell wasn't a, a freshman. And it's, when it's Braxton gotta, it's Miller when Braxton Miller went out, the first string quarterback of that season went out. It was er, it was it was early the beginning of August. It was beginning, the beginning of, August, of August before the season even started. So we we all loved the Cardell Jones third string quarterback thing, but he was the second string quarterback through the entire season. He was being yeah. coached to take over just in case the entire season. Oh, I love I, I love the Cardell Jones third string quarterback story, but if you try to apply that to Lincoln Keenholz, you're wrong on at least two different levels. 
they supposed to be quarterback. They, and, they and only get you, 15 you practices. You, Zach, they only get 15 I know you practices. mentioned, Jared, that um, without McCord next year, Ohio State's going to be fine. I th- things that things have to change here, um, both offensive line and the quarterback play. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who love Devin Brown, and I, I hope I hope he succeeds. I hope he does really well, but it, it's got to be it's got to be said right now with the limit with the limited play that he's had. Anytime he can, get, has gone in recently, he's he's injury prone right now. It's 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 a it's I, I hate to I hate to see that because I th- I think Devin Brown has a lot of heart. I think he has a lot of talent, but the last two meaningful games that he's played in, he's he's got hurt quickly, quickly. Like he got on the he gets on the field, takes a few snaps, and he's hurt. So Ohio State has to either get someone in the portal. Or they're going to have to ride, uh, or they're going to have to ride with Air Nolan next year if if he does if he does well I, starting I don't, off. I I don't want to say that. Um, I think Keenholtz has a good future. Uh, I don't think we should let what we saw during the Cotton Bowl reflect in any way. Should should not contribute uh, yeah, to our I, opinion of Lincoln Keenholtz for all the reasons I just uh, said. True no, freshman got too. no practice reps all season. Um, again, where was Jebby? I, I don't even but, know but why think, Keenholz was thrown out there. They they all, th- they obviously the, didn't trust him to throw the ball. Why was he even out there? Yeah, I, I think the big bigger thing is is, and I, I don't I, mean, I I don't know if it's too late right now because of all because of all the talented um players in the portal have already found a home like that that would do something about this o-line here i know Ohio state has had some success in the transfer portal uh and with the o-line here but like what are, what are we doing here what are we what are we doing here like th- th- this is the the most obvious position that needs to be addressed and it's one of the most important positions because without it, you can't give the ball off to number thirty-two to do well. You can't, you can't uh, allow your receivers to run five yards and then make a make a route um, cut. You can't do anything. Yeah, it, it, it starts in the trenches here. It starts at the trenches, and this offensive line has to change. We've talked about it recently. I don't remember specifically when we talked about it recently on this podcast. Ohio State is, in theory, returning four of their five offensive linemen. But if though all four is of that those, a good thing? No, not is that a good thing? Not if they if all four of those offensive linemen are playing in the same position. If they're all starting and starting in the same position as they were next year, next year is going to suck. Straight up, next year is going to suck. Ohio State needs a left tackle and maybe Montgomery is way more going to be way more ready than I'm ready that I realize he's going to be and Montgomery can take care of the left tackle position. I I don't think that's the case. May have to may have to maybe because I think Simmons, I think, can be a serviceable right tackle in the Big Ten. He's not a left tackle in the Big Ten. I feel fine. I would feel totally fine. If they moved Simmons to right tackle and brought in a really nice le- left tackle. I I don't think we can blame Mickey Mariotti for Devin Brown's ankle issues. That's dumb. No. Um, Fryer is not a tackle in the Big Ten. Might he make a decent right guard? I don't know. I'm not in practice with him every day. I'll let the coaches make that determination, but he's not, he's not attack. He's not a big 10 tackle straight up. He got turnstiled so much this year. Um, I, and quite frankly, and I don't think Ohio State's going to have this luxury, but quite frankly, if they replaced both of the interior guards, I wouldn't be heartbroken either. 
or excuse me, the not both of the interior guards. Uh, if they replaced the center and the left guard, uh, I wouldn't be heartbroken. Yep. I think both of those guys can play with a with another year of development, with some good tackles around them. I think those guys can play. I wouldn't feel terrible if they were both playing next year. I really don't know what the the status is with Hinsman as far as the mutual relationship between him and the team right now. Um, uh, we don't have. Uh, we don't we don't have definitive word on whether uh, Jackson's coming back or not. I imagine he will be. You didn't have an NFL type year this year. Um, the offensive line has to change. And quite frankly, if you if you gave Kyle McCord this exact same offensive line that CJ Stroud had last year. Tom McCord would have been a hell of a lot better. He would not have been as good as CJ Stroud. Don't. Don't mix that up. CJ Stroud's a better quarterback. CJ Stroud's a much better quarterback. Much, much better quarterback. Much, much, much better yeah. quarterback. I don't know how many. I don't know how many muches I need to put in there to to stave off the comments. Um, no, That's Kyle McCord awesome. would not have found ways to fail. Kyle McCord is an above average college football quarterback. He was just not great. The way mm. CJ Stroud, the way Justin Fields, the way Dwayne Haskins were great. Kyle McCord's an above average college football quarterback. And an above average so, college football quarterback isn't going to overcome the offensive line that he had in front of him. So some positives here mentioned that that the uh, defense played really well. Jack sure. Sawyer had himself a Jack Sawyer had himself Career a game, game. three sacks and three sacks in this game here. I thought Burke looked pretty well as well. Cody Simon um, played really well as well. Uh, so I thought I thought the defense did what they needed to do. I mean, Missouri has a really really talented offense, a very talented and offense. And I, and they, held them to the and they held them to four and they held them to 14 points all, all in the foot. They, they held them through th th the first three quarters scoreless. Yeah. Like they, they did. They did. They did their job. Honestly, uh, one I of the best. One of the I think, honestly, weirdly, the best. This is the best defensive performance they had all year. This was the best defensive because they got no help from the offense. The offense was. Constantly screwing them over on field position, on time of possession. Kyle, do you have the time of possession for this game? I do. Give me a second. I uh, and if you also have average here. starting field position, which I, I get isn't necessarily as 30, easy. 34 minutes. 34 to 26. I was expecting at least 36 to 24, but still. Um, and then like the average starting position had to have been where did we start on average or 22? <sighs> maybe. Maybe the 20. I'm looking. It I'm looking. felt like we were always starting inside our own 15 and Missouri was always starting at the 50. That's what it felt like. Um, The fact and again, this Missouri offense, I'll say this is the best offense Ohio State played all year. This is the best offense Ohio State, especially considering pure talent. We can talk about Michigan and like Michigan's offensive line, and that's a fair conversation to have to have. But as far as like skill positions are concerned, absolutely the best offense Ohio State's played all year. And so given all of the challenges they had to deal with. As far as the offense not holding up their side of the bargain, I think is the best defensive performance the team's had all year. Missouri had averaged starting at their own 27 Ohio well, state owned 21. I don't believe, I don't believe that. Well, I am sure it's, show, yeah. I'm sure it's true, but I don't believe it. Um, but I, I, like I said, I know what it felt like. You can do the transition, Kyle. It doesn't have to be me. Um, so I, I guess just last, last things, last things here. Um, and I know, I know 
in our last episode, I was going on a whim here about, well, this game matters. Uh-huh. This Kyle game, and this I game, spent the entire this Know Your game. Enemy show me saying bowl games no longer matter and who cares? And Kyle was fighting me the entire episode. This game, this game has meaningful minutes and uh, and snaps for these young, these young freshmen and, and players who Just like get to the see the ball, game. get to see the ball next uh, next year. I mean, it was it wasn't so much this game, but just seeing the bowl games as a whole. Yeah, they're they're just all the other bowl games. Just how much, how much has changed, and how how little these, how how little these bowl games matter anymore with so many players um, transferring out, so many players. I don't want to say opt out because there, there's there's good reasons why some pl- what some players opt out. And I'm not gonna. I'm not going to fault them for that, but it's 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 early it's early early signing day and the transfer portal timing is needs to change. It I'll needs say to this. Change. I'm going to say this: if if the, the, if if you want if you want bowl games to matter again, those two things need to change. Here here here's what I'm going to say: one, if you think this bowl these bowl games actually matter, why wasn't Marvin Harrison playing? If the bowl game actually matters, why wasn't Marvin Harrison playing? Missouri had two defensive starters out as well. Uh, if this was a playoff game, Eichenberg would have played. And if you disagree with me, shut the fuck up. Oh, no, no, no. Eichenberg didn't opt out. He's just hurt. If it was a playoff game. He would have played. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Now, Kyle's come around to my side of this. The bowl games don't matter. This bowl season has proved it. And as far as the opting out player, the players opting out goes, I have said this since Christian McCaffrey and a few of the other guys basically pioneered this. Was it five or so six? I don't know how many years ago it was that first year where players just started opting out. 2015, Zach says, I'll just trust him. I don't know. No, no, no. It's been no, that's that's not. That's not true. It has not been four years. Um, Anyway. Ever since Christian McCaffrey and his other guys started pioneering this, I have said people are mad at them. People are mad at players who opt out mostly for one reason, for one reason. And that reason is, is that it demonstrates what we all know is already true. Ever since the BCS was enabled us to put team number one and team number two on the same field. All other ball games stopped mattering. When the playoff came into be, it came into being they, all the other ball games that weren't the playoff games mattered even less. And guess what? We have a 12 team playoff coming next year. If you aren't in the playoff, it doesn't fucking matter. And the players who opt out, we, we, and I say we, I don't mean me. I've always been pro player on this. We're mad at them because they demonstrate to us what we don't want to be true, which is that the bowl games don't matter. And by yep. the way, if you think we're wrong, there is a person holding a very important position in college football who absolutely agrees with us. Uh, and we're going to talk about him right after this commercial break. If you want to avoid these commercial breaks, Uh, Go ahead and join our Patreon Uh, on the podcast feed. You will not get these commercial breaks. All right, Kyle, this is this is what and I'm I'm pulling these quotes from a uh, Ross Dillinger story over at Yahoo Sports commercial breaks. Yeah, we're just announcing the commercial breaks going for the podcast feed now. You're you're a sloop cat. You listen through Patreon. You don't get those weird Spreaker commercial breaks that are automated, uh, automatedly put into the show. Um, Automatedly is not a word. It's automatically. Anyway, um, this is uh, this this is from Kirby Smart, the uh, coach at Georgia. People need to look at what happened tonight. They need to fix this. This is after Georgia absolutely decimated Florida state. Um, there's still going to be bowl games. 
outside of the college football playoff, people need to decide if they want to, uh, uh, people need to decide what they want and what they want to get out of this. It's really unfortunate for those kids on the sideline that had to play in that game that didn't have their full arsenal. It affected the game 100%. Florida State had, what was the final count, Kyle? Lose like 20 kids opt out of the game? Something like that. Yeah, it's something ridiculous. They had, I, I don't, it, I forget the exact total, um, but hold on. I think I have this somewhere. Um, turns out that the, da, 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 da. I think they were missing something like 12 starters, something crazy like that. 13, 13 starters, 13 starters. Thank you, Kyle. 13 starters, 20, uh, nearly 30 players in total. Florida state was missing from this team. Yep. Yep. That's what I'm seeing here. Close to 30. Yeah, that's. Bowl games don't matter. And I oh, what about the New Year's Day six bowls? Ohio State, once Ohio State lost Brown, they were just trying to get out of that game without losing anybody else. Tell me I'm wrong. They were just trying to get out of that game. You're not. Thank you. Ryan Day didn't give a shit about winning that game. After Devin Brown went out, it was just fuck it. Let's get out of here. Go home. Get back to recruiting. And you know what? I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Florida State yeah, what, what? lost 30 plus. You only get 85 scholarship players. You only have 22 starters. They lost 30 and 13 respectively. And that's a New Year's Day six bowl. If you're not in the playoff, it doesn't matter. People saying uh, day went conservative, but what the fuck are you supposed to do? 100%. You got a third string, true freshman quarterback in there. You got an offensive line who couldn't stop an ant pile. What the hell was Ryan Day supposed to do? He ran the clock out and went back to Columbus, right. and I don't blame him. Yeah, I right. agree. This is... Uh, right, um uh, going you through, do this next going part? through a lot of oh wait a yeah, minute the, the nick carpelli thing i think is oh, worth talking about yeah yeah so um yeah he's the executive director for the bowl season his plan here he wants to eliminate early signing day yes please hold yes, on we hold are on. kyle and i i i have my noise gate on this claps probably aren't coming through Kyle and I have hated nope. early signing day from before it started. Day one, since day one. Day zero <laughs> before yeah. it started. Get rid of the early um, signing day, please. His plan is also to eliminate fall transfer portal window. Yes. I, I don't want to. Now, I, I do disagree with him on this one. No, I don't. I don't. I want to delay it or turn it into the okay, winter. Okay. All right. All right. Because he I'll does go, go on. Yeah. He does go on to say later in the article that there only should be one transfer portal window. And I disagree with him on that. Mm -hmm. I think that there should be one at like January 15th. Jan yeah, that's the date then, I'm thinking of too. And yeah, just push it back a month. And then one at like May 15th or, you know, what May 1st, whenever all the spring games have have cycled through. Yeah. And then the third, and then the third one, allow bulls to compensate players for participation. Pay the players. Pay yep. the damn I'm, players. I'm all for that. Uh, so he goes on here, just quoting, uh, we need to revisit the structure around the transfer portal. Maybe there should be one transfer portal window that happens at the end of the academic year. Maybe it allows student athletes to rethink things. Let me see how things go in practice. Uh, Gives coaches an opportunity to get high school recruiting done, evaluate the 100%. roster in the spring, and people can make decisions based off of that. I, I 
again, I will always approach things from a player first perspective. The early signing day was meant to protect players. That was what they sold to people anyway. It was not. It was it was something no. that was used to pressure players to sign early. And it's been a disaster anti-player measure from the beginning. Um, again, I'm always going to lean pro player. I, I do think that two transfer windows are it is the correct way of going about things. I just think that the first one should be delayed until January, until after bowl season. Do you think these private bowl committees would be down with paying players for participation? If they don't, they can go to hell. If if you can't afford to pay the players, you don't deserve to exist. Then, Quite frankly. then, then you're going to have less people. You're going to have less people watching them then. Kyle, once we have a 12 team playoff. Yep. How much are people yep. going to keep watching bowl games anyway? Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. All right. Um, going to the bowl games here, Jared. Uh, I'm just scrolling through games that actually worthwhile talking about. <laughs> well, then you're just going all the way to the playoff, as we've discussed in this episode at length. <laughs> Kyle, uh, what I think I, I, we I, all care I, I, about here. Uh, uh, who won the Sloop Cast Bowl well, 2023? Well, okay. Before before we do that, I just want to I just how how wrong we were from the start of the season, Jared. Oh when oh it came no. to Yeah. When it came to Northwestern. Oh Northwestern. Yeah. Northwestern, we thought it would be like a one-two win team. Finishes season eight and five with a bowl game victory. Did not see that one. I, I couldn't have been more wrong uh, based off of my prediction, based off of the certainty of my prediction. We've been doing this podcast, Kyle, since 2015. I do, I've never been more wrong ever than I was about what I thought Northwestern was going to be this year. And I've been wrong a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the other one too, uh, I thought Maryland played, played pretty well as sure. well, uh, this, this season too. And they, uh, defeated a, an Auburn team that uh, should they have been to the bowl game? Uh, whatever doesn't doesn't really matter. But they Auburn God, does Auburn it. suck? Sure, but was I mean like I think they're somewhat comparable as far as like even within their own conferences to 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 what Maryland yeah. was in the Big Ten. Yeah, but that's fair. That's fair. All right. Um. So, so I guess I guess the game is that wanting to talk about then, Jared. Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl here. Yeah. Michigan. Or, 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 Michigan's going or, to the yeah, national we'll title. Off. Yep, we'll start off with the Rose Bowl. Michigan defeats Alabama in overtime, twenty-seven to twenty. Uh, I think this is the second second time in a. In a row that no no that's not that's not it. I'm trying to remember what the exact stat was, but historically in the bowl games, I think Michigan's has done well against Alabama in bowl games, and I think they said like in like 24 or 25 years ago, um, Tom Brady beat Alabama. Alabama in a, was shit in back a bowl then, though, game, weren't they? most likely yeah <laughs> alabama had a long bad period through the 90s and through the early mm. aughts I, so I tom brady beating alabama doesn't mean a lot to me yeah bama beat michigan in 2019 okay see there there you go that yeah, that's okay. important yep there was there was that one yes But yeah, uh, Michigan Michigan wins and yeah, I I thought when when Alabama scored that touchdown with like four and a half minutes left, I th I thought Alabama 
was going to win that game. But I mean, I mean, Michigan just dug down and got that touchdown to force overtime there. And yeah, Milrow is just, <sighs> he'll win you some games and he'll lose you games. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he, like Kyle McCord, is an above average college football quarterback. Uh, that's that's who Milrow mm-hmm. is. Um, nothing yep. more, nothing less. Um, again, it's such a shame that Bama is going to have to vacate this win. It's it's really a shame because they actually are good. They didn't need to cheat. They actually are good. They didn't have to do what they did. They didn't have to do the, it. By the way, Kyle, the if, one, if, and I know we don't like to think about this, but they still did 100%, 100% gangland. We talked about that at length at the top of the show. Um, here, here, if Michigan wins the national title, it will be the second year in a row in which Ohio State lost by one score to the eventual national champions. Keep that in mind the next time you are calling for Ryan Day's job. I told everybody, I it, it was literally an episode called I Will Die on This Hill. I told everybody that Ohio State was going to lose to Michigan again. Now, after I, I got all horny, I'm not going to lie, a- after the sign stealing stuff, and I was like, oh, they're fake. They're not actually good. And then by the time we got to, you know, do like know your enemy, Ohio State versus Michigan. I was all I was all high on the horse that Ohio State's going to beat Michigan this year. Turns out they were actually good without cheating. I literally said it during the offseason with all the everyone that Michigan was bringing back, that this was going to be the best Michigan team we had seen since the last time they won a national title in 98, 98, right? Um This is a really good team. I'm sorry, like Ohio State fans need to realize that they're not the only team in the Ohio State Michigan rivalry. Why does Ryan Day lost two in a row? Even 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 if we pretend the cheating didn't happen for a moment. Why did Ohio State why why did Ryan Day lose two in a row and and Urban Meyer never lost one and Tress never lost two in a row? And it's because Michigan hasn't been this good in a long time. They're, they're the other team in the rivalry factors in. Super seniors. Yes. Thank you, gangland. Michigan currently has 44 super seniors on their team. It is these. Uh, this team is a team full of adult men. These are adult ass men. And it also means they're going to be losing a lot next year. Yep. But it's, you know, uh, Michigan, we out, always out recruit Michigan. Why are they so good? Well, because they have a bunch of six year players playing our three year players. It matters. And in whatever you're thinking, well, why can't Ohio State do this or that in NIL? It's because Ohio State's currently attempting to emulate what Michigan's doing and all their NIL money is trying to go into keeping guys like Jack Sawyer and Travion Henderson and Emeka Abuka on the team so they can play next year. Ohio yeah. State's emulating what Michigan did because you adapt or you die. So the other game, the Sugar Bowl here, Jared. Uh, thriller, thriller, right down to the right down to the line there. Uh, Washington gets their first playoff victory, just like Michigan, uh, beating Texas thirty-seven to thirty-one here. Yep, yep. Um, two Big Ten teams. Yeah, that's right. Yep. I'm, 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 I'm already counting it. Two Big Ten teams in the national title. Kyle, I, I nine years. First time, and I believe the number is nine years that we won't have a SEC team in the national title game. 
I believe that's the number I saw. Nine years. Yep. It's been, yeah, that, since that Ohio be. State played Oregon. Yep, that would be, yes. Since Ohio State played Oregon. Going through a lot of BCS games. Uh, again, this will be the only second time that's in the playoff era that there won't be a SEC team involved. And in both, and ironically, in both cases, you have two rivals. Not well, two. How, how do I say this correctly? You have one team's rival from 2014 playing the other team's rival from 2014. Okay. And it's an interesting coincidence. I'm not trying to set yeah. up a Michigan fate thing. I'm really not trying to do it. But there are some interesting parallels. Was the BCS a better system? Fuck no. Absolutely not. Uh, that's right. so that's, the, a, that's some rosy colored perspective. Uh, that's a, not how that sentence should have been formulated, but you know what I'm saying? 100% not. No. Yeah, Penix had himself a game here. He threw for over 400 yards in this game here. It made, made some made some just dime throws and yeah, it, it should be should be a very fun should be a very fun game watching uh watching the Huskies uh win the title this year. Or in a, <laughs> or in a week or two. When, when, whenever they're whenever they're playing the uh the uh championship game. What uh, is that? Uh, Monday. Next Monday. Next Monday. Yeah. Next Monday. Yep. They take over the Monday night football slot once the NFL is done with it, is what they try to do with the championship game. You think Got their it. defense will hold up? Which which they are you talking about? Yes. Which one? Washington. It's a good question. Uh, honestly, the... Their defense is flawed. Um, I th I'm trying not to say what I'm about to say. I'm really trying Don't not to dare, say Jared. what I'm about to say. Don't you dare, Jared. Michigan's a better rounded is much better rounded a football team. Um, and I think that they're going to win it. I, right. I, who, who wants to, who wants to do the honor guys? I don't want that to be true. Kyle, I don't want that to be true. Just calling it as I see it. I'm not I'm not here to tell people what they want to hear. Have I not proven that through eight or nine years of the sleuth cast? Have I not proven that I'm not here to tell people what they want to hear? Yeah, I, I had the entire Discord <laughs> server coming after me last week for saying that the bowl games don't matter and weird that everyone's come around to my side on that weird how that works yeah i was literally telling people all year i know you guys don't like kyle mccord but the offensive line's actually the issue you guys Oh, Kyle McCord, play calling, play calling, Kyle McCord, Kyle McCord, play calling. And I'm sitting here going, guys, it's the offensive line. Y'all are fucking two quarters I'm curious into it, the cotton I'm, bowl. I'm, and people are like, gee, I wonder if the offensive line was the issue all along. Gee, you don't say. I'm curious, Jared, going back, if we go through all of our. Uh, if we go through all of our Scarlet and Grade. Yeah. Episodes. How many times we gave the offensive line higher than a B grade? Was there any? Uh, probably, uh, definitely. But again, yeah, we we that's grade. What I, that's what I was thinking, gangland. Maybe one, but I think it was more than one. But you also have to remember that we we grade based off of expectations when we do Scarlet and Grade, and we had low expectations yeah. for the offensive line. I think if we were doing our job then it's it was a heavy curve exactly spikes and i, and I think game that one did we game perform was... like expected uh for ohio state ohio state's offensive line did have some surprisingly good games at times this year no i think 
I would say maybe the uh, maybe the Minnesota game. I would say the Minnesota game would be a good good one. Ohio State won thirty seven to three, and Ohio and the offensive line played very well in that game. Yeah, I, I would I would say that might be the one. Um, I feel like they did they play pretty well against Wisconsin too against a pretty decent Wisconsin defensive line. Like there were instances in which no, not Wisconsin. I'm, I might just be thinking of Minnesota. I'd have to go back and look. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah, not, not the Wisconsin game. So if I, if I go to Sparty here, Oh, we, we, we gave, we gave Sparty, we gave, we gave the O-line a high, high grade for, for Sparty. There you go. So like it happened. They and they did play well yeah. in certain games. It's just it is what it is. Um yep. but the offensive line can't right, go, continue back. the way it is. All right, so back back to the to the bowl games here. Actually, before you do that, let's do another quick commercial break. Uh if you want to avoid these commercial breaks, uh please join us on Patreon where you can listen ad free. Kyle now not we're, we're back um the bowl predictions the sloopcast bowl 2023 yes now how did you do how did you do from a win percentage standpoint i didn't do bad i got 60 percent of the bowl predictions correct is that what mine was too i, th- I think i think that's how it was for me I, I got 60% of my bowl corrections correct. It's actually like 59 point something. Oh. I rounded up. Yeah. Okay. So you did a little bit better than me. I did. I I was 24 for 18, which is about 57%. So right. yeah, you did, you did better than me when it comes to. Now here's the thing. Percent. Uh-huh. Yep. It's, it's your confidence now, score. Now here's the thing. It's your confidence score. Um. The confidence, because the win percentage isn't what we're doing here. Um, I had 31 points on Utah. Uh, Utah didn't win. I had San Jose State for 29 points. They didn't win. Uh, I had Louisville over USC for 30 points. That didn't work out. Uh, I had 35 points on SMU. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had 32 yeah, I, I, points on Iowa State. I had 40 points on Ohio State. And Kyle, yeah. if you remember. Two of my biggest two of my I actually the my two biggest scores. I put on the games that I felt like would actually matter. I, I didn't want to play the motivation game. Number one predictor in any bowl game is which team cares more. So I wanted to put my big numbers and I put two of my, I put two of my biggest numbers on the two playoff games. I had 41 points on Alabama and 38 points on Texas. I had, I had 30 points on Alabama, but I had one point on Washington. Now, wow. thankfully, I put my highest I, score I on Oregon, so I did retain my forty-two pointer. No, I had four. I had forty-one on Oregon. My forty-two, I had Georgia. I had my thirty-nine <laughs> on Georgia. Um, so, the, so the ones that I lost, Jared, the highest one that I lost it looks like it was thirty-seven, and that was I picked Troy to beat Duke. That that was that was my highest one, and also lost thirty-four of. Northwestern uh, beating Utah. I picked Utah on that one. Uh, I also picked SMU to win, but they lost, and I lost 32. And the other big one that I had of more than 30 points was Iowa State, and they yeah. lost, and that was 33. So, so a lot of our total, big losers are the same. Yeah, in grand total, Jared, grand yeah. total. What's the total score? I had, I had 488 points. 518. Now, and I haven't checked this card yet, uh, but I was told in the Discord server, uh, I, I believe that Dinger 
one of our sloop cats uh surpassed the 600 mark um 659 he said he went 10 and 2 on games with 30 points or more i have that man a t-shirt um yep i have that man a t-shirt god that's he won last year too by the way at least i beat kyle for the first year is that true Yes, it is true. I don't know if that's true or not. Did Dinger win the sloop picks too? No, Cousin Jay won the sloop picks. Nope. Yep. Cousin Jay won the sloop picks. Um, yeah. Dinger, Dinger for the second year in a row wins the sloop cast bowl. Uh, Kyle will win one day. At least I beat you. One day. That's all I can say. At least they beat you. Maybe he should host that episode. So of all that hurts because it's true. For, for, Spikes. For how, that hurts for how, because it's true. For. For the number of years that we've been doing this, Jared, you now have one win in this in the in the uh, bull picks. And you oh, have one hold win. Hold on. Hold on. And one win in the uh, in our. Uh, for t- time out. As far as the sloop picks are concerned, there is also a tie in there. So shut up. There it. Hey, that's still not a win. That's still okay. not a win. And as far as the sloop cast bowl, <laughs> we haven't even been doing this that many years. So don't even be like, oh, since the sloop cast started, we've only been doing this for like yep. four years. I'm the real sloop pick winner. No, you're not. Cousin Jay was. We have we have that one computer calculated. I said I do I still I wow sentences are hard. I do still need to check Dinger's card to make sure that his math is good and he didn't cheat. I don't expect that need, he did. Need but to I'd check be a your bad, card, too. What's that? Need to check your card too. check my card. I, it's posted in the <laughs> server. Check it. Uh, do the math. But Dinger, as far as I can tell, beats everyone so bad that even if he has a couple miscalculations in there, I think he still won. Because I think, and I, I don't have the channel up right now, Kyle. I think that uh, I'm in second place at with 518. I didn't see anyone higher than that when I was looking earlier. Uh, and Dinger here. beat me by 130 points or something like that. He didn't just win. He embarrassed everybody. Also, Kyle, we read our cards out live on the show, too. So, I mean, feel free to check all of my scores. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was an apps. Uh, he, he, I, I, I venture to say Dinger headed out of the park. Uh, and that's all I have to say about that. Mm. All right. So that was the bowl season as a whole. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've now come over to Jared's side in that until things change when it comes to the transfer portal and early signing day, if you're not in the playoffs, these bowl games are meaningless because you're going to have so many players transferring out, going to have so many players opting out, not playing, whatever the case may be. And you're just going to get a just glorified young player, young, young player, young players getting getting snaps. And that's that's all glorified matters. spring game. Plus, it was the term I used during Know Your Enemy and I stand by it, it is spring game plus. And Kyle, the one thing I will disagree with you on as far as what you just said, the bowl games aren't fixable, my guy. The bowl games aren't fixable. It's too little too late. We have a 12 team playoff now. Starting January 15th, whatever, when after the day after the national title game. We are officially a 12 team playoff system. The bowl games don't matter. They just don't. And that's not a thing that is starting on January 9th. 
That's just a thing that becomes even more true on January 9th. The same way it became even more true in 2014 when the 14 playoff was put into place. It's a thing that became true when the BCS became the BCS. And it has just every change along the way has made it have made them less and less relevant. The 12 team playoff should kill it. It won't kill it, but it should kill it. And no amount of NIL money or shifting of. And by the way, they should still change the portal and they should still change the early signing date. Those things should still change. Those changes should happen regardless of the bowls. And if there are going to be bowls, pay the players also do that. But you're putting a Band-Aid on the side of the Titanic at this point. And quite frankly, good. Screw the Bulls. I, I don't care. It. You got you got anything got anything else you want to? I was going to ask about? you the same, Kyle. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, not really. To be honest, I was look actually trying to pull up the. Uh, uh, any of the basketball here? What's com- what's coming up for the uh, the basketball team here after they uh, had a narrow uh, win escape against West Virginia just recently? Uh, they do have two games this week, Jared. Uh, they have one Wednesday against Rutgers, and then they also have one over in Indiana this Saturday. Kyle. You just talked about basketball. I did. Everyone has left the podcast now. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a perfect gone. time for you to go to, to do your spiel then. <laughs> By the way, if you didn't leave, if you were just sitting there listening, loving everything Kyle had to say about basketball, I want you to prove it in the YouTube chat. Down in the YouTube comments. Uh, just, just put a basketball emoji, put a basketball emoji in the YouTube chat to prove that you listened all the way to the end and that you, and quite frankly, that I've said this before. I'll say it again in in the YouTube chat. No guys in the YouTube chat, in the YouTube chat, in the YouTube comments. That, that that's where I want this. So um, I because I've said it before, I'll say it again. Anytime we put basketball in the thumbnail or give it a basketball title in the 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 listening, the listeners drop off by like two thirds. If you want us to cover basketball, if you made it all the way to the end of the podcast and you want us to cover basketball, throw a basketball emoji in the YouTube chat. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Tonight's ending music will be a Columbus based band called Super Destroyer. Name of the band once again is Super Destroyer. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Super Destroyer.